Hi everyone. I want to talk a little bit more about entering the secret place. I just feel like, you know, ever since I posted the last video about the secret place, I've just been just sitting with this topic and having a great hunger just to be with him. I want to experience more of God. And so I've been telling the Holy Spirit, stir up that hunger in me. I don't want to ever be satisfied with what I've experienced. And that's been my prayer all week, you know. And um, to be quite honest, it's, you know, for the last one month or so, I, it was just building up in me so much that um, I had to go away. I went away for a short while just to, just to be with him. And sometimes, you know, when we go about life and we're, we're, we're taking care of the kids and we have work to do and this and that and so many people to focus on and people to serve and all this kind of stuff going on that meeting with God ends up taking second place in our lives. And that's not good. It must always have first place in our life. First that, then everything else, you know. So how do we accomplish that? How do we do that when... We have such busy lives. I mean, it's really, the answer is quite simple. Don't get so busy then. <laughs> it sounds like, like, I mean, it really, I mean, it might sound absurd to some of some people, but don't get so busy. You've got to refrain from saying yes to a lot of things, especially if you're beginning to see a lot of things stealing your time away from God or your focus is not on Him. Something else has taken that place. That's a good time to say, you know what? Yeah, time to let go of some things, time to put aside some things. And, and, and guess what? By, by doing this, by putting God first, your life is not going to get ruined, okay? Some of you might say, but if I stop doing this, this, and this, I mean, who's going to take care of this, this, and this? You know, somebody's got to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, with that kind of an attitude, this is going to be very hard to experience. You must, part of this has to do with just resting in God, just trusting God. I want to say this too, you know, um, transformation, okay, for transformation to happen in your life, you've got to spend time with God in the secret place, have to, you know, so get into the word of God, read, 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 eat the word of God every single day, worship God, praise his name every single day. These are all things that every believer must do to grow and to, you know, learn about what he has in store for us and to be guided every single day of our lives and to stay in the center of his will for our lives. Yes, but there is one thing that is missing in a lot of people's lives and that is abiding in the presence of God. For transformation to happen and to stick, we have to do this. And one way to look at it is, this is an effortless change, you know? This is a, the, the way to make it happen effortlessly. Because all we're doing here is spending time with God, filling our minds with everything God has already given us, and filling our minds with thoughts about God and praises of God, it's all about Him. If you notice, it's, it's all talking about magnifying Him. The, you are not found in any of this, is it? Or, I mean, are you? No. We're, we're magnifying God. It's, it's not just about, oh, less of me and more of you, God, but it is God, take over completely. Take over completely so that there's no more of me left. Dying to self, you know. Um, anyway, I, I, before I just keep going, I, I want to share a couple of verses, okay? Um, Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for Him. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for Him. He is the answer. He is the answer to transformation. He is the answer to everything. 
And at one point you will realize the more you do this, the more you give God all your attention and you hunger for nothing more than being with Him. Okay? What will happen is that even your prayers will change. Pretty soon you'll realize, I'm not even praying about the same things anymore. Your prayer life will completely change. And you'll notice, you'll notice that some things you don't even feel the need to pray for or pray about. You, you stop praying about certain things because you're just so, you, 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 you change. You change. This is what happens. The more time you spend with Him, you behave differently. You think differently. You pray differently. You handle things differently. You don't tolerate all the junk that you once tolerated. And I'll go to the extent of saying this. This is so precious. This is so key. The Lord loves it when someone comes to Him with a repentant heart. Okay? He immediately just welcomes them in. Just like, you know, when the prodigal son returned to the father. The father was already outside waiting for him. Because it's, the word says that he went running to him. He saw him at a distance, went running to him and to receive him. <laughs> That's how our Father God is. He loves it when people have hunger and thirst in their heart. He sees it. He loves it when someone comes to him with a repentant heart. He loves it when a person has, you know, as the word says, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Most people read that and think, but why should I be broken? If God has fixed my brokenness, why should I continue to be broken? It talks, it means that you oh, want nothing more than to just go all out for God. You just want, don't, you, you won't tolerate sin. You just, you know, you just have such a repentant heart that you keep running back to Him. You just keep running back to Him. That's why brokenness is a beautiful and powerful thing brokenness and you can even put humility in there because those things go together brokenness and hunger for God our bridegroom is pursuing us the bride he is he's coming back for his bride one day right our bridegroom is pursuing us he has been pursuing us from the very beginning he hasn't stopped pursuing us his pursuit of us didn't stop the day Jesus died and rose again. No. He continues to pursue us. Are we pursuing Him the same way? It's like, you know, when you read the Song of Songs, that entire book is about that pursuit of both of them, you know? One pursuing the other, and then you see the other one pursuing the other one. I mean, wow. That's a beautiful depiction of... The Lord pursuing after us. But is it just a one-way thing in your life? I want us to examine our hearts. You know, King David, what I like about him is that he prayed a really powerful prayer. He said many things, many wonderful things about pursuing God in His presence. He said, you know, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be, you know, a doorkeeper in your courts, right? That's what he said. Let me just pull that up. Thank you, Lord. Um, he said all that. He said, I just want to gaze on your beauty, right? And yet he also said this, Lord, examine my heart. Let me, let me get to that. Um, this is really good. This is really good. Psalm 139. Okay. And then I'm going to read 23 and 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offensive way in me. Lead me in the everlasting way. Have you prayed this prayer? Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. A person cannot come and spend time with God every day in His presence, in the secret place. Not talking about as a congregation or as a family or, or you know, with your prayer partner. You alone with God in His presence, waiting there until you meet Him. You know, not 
not chanting any prayers or speaking in tongues or praying and worshiping and trying to make this happen. No striving here. It's all, you just come in and you rest. You just wait on Him and you don't run away too quickly before you experience Him. How can a person experience God and walk away from that unchanged? That's not possible. That's not possible. You know, if you've had this, this experience, this real experience, you know, you know, it's not possible to come away from this experience from God and not transform. You know, everything about you will change. Everything about you will change. I don't know if I already said this um, because I've had these thoughts, you know, go through my mind all week. So sometimes I don't know if I already said it in the video or whether I was just saying it to myself. <laughs> um, but yeah your motivations, your, um, your dreams, you know, your prayer life, everything changes about you. And it will change in a much shorter time than if you were to strive, strive, strive to make it happen without going to be with God every day. So I'm, I just want to stir your hearts up today um, the Holy Spirit will stir your hearts up today, you know, to do these four things. Okay, I've listed these things down. To center your life, to live a life that is centered around meeting God every day. Okay. Secondly, knowing God. This is not in any uh, particular order. Knowing God. A life centered around meeting God. Knowing God, which takes place in, you know, when you have this, this intimate meeting with Him. Pursuing encounters with Him. A lot of people feel like, you know, their prayer life is dead. Their, 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 you know, their lives are just lacking excitement or real joy. Um, well, pursue encounters with Him. Seek out the fullness of God's presence. Seek. Seek the, full, the fullness of God's presence. You must hunger for these things. You must seek these things. You must pursue Him to find Him. I want to encourage you by saying this. You know, King David, like I said, you know, he was always talking about these things about pursuing him in his presence and I, but I want to say this we today have greater access to the heart of God than King David did than Moses did than all these other people did you know we have direct access to the heart of God wow let me just quickly read a couple more verses here um I'll just go here. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Okay? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Put everything else away and just seek him. Turn all your, that means turn all your attention away from all the other people and things, whatever is going on in your life, and turn it towards God. You must come to a place where you're so desperate for Him. And this is, you know, how it is every day that when you open up the Bible, verses are connecting and jumping out at you in just new ways every day. It's like confirmation after confirmation. You know, you're getting... Um, you know, like certain verses that you've read a hundred times, you've, you've heard people say this before, like they, they, they sound different. You know, now when you read it, you're thinking, oh wait, that reminds me of this something else. And then you turn there and then, oh, there it is. And then when you read that, you, you just remember, you know, this dream you had or this vision you had. And then somebody else confirms that over the phone in the next, t you know, after 10 minutes. I mean, it's a wild journey with God. <laughs> and um, it is exciting. It is exciting. There's nothing more exciting than that. <clears throat> okay, I want to say this. You have to be so desperate for this experience that any free moment you get, you know, 
like five minutes of your time was just freed up. How are you going to fill up those five minutes? You probably will find something to do in those five minutes. It's probably not, or maybe it is, I don't know. It's probably not, oh, I've got five minutes. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I need to spend time with him. If you're doing that, oh man, just sit back and watch your life just change. I don't care what people say. A lot of people, you know, they, they, they hear things, you know, people say this and they sh immediately shoot it down and say, oh yeah, psh, yeah, sit back and see how life changes. No, you have to do this. 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 You have to be like this. No, I'd rather do it this way, you know, just, I put my child to sleep. I don't know if I've shared this, you know, I put my child to sleep and immediately I go back into my room. I shut the door and I go be with God. I'm not saying that to brag about it. I'm saying like, it is possible. We can do this. You know, yes, I'm a busy mom too. I have things going on apart from just being a mom, but I carve out time. I make space for God. I make space for God. You have to make space for God, you know? So the first thought that, thought that comes to mind when you get a little bit of time, whether it is morning, noon, or night, is not, hmm, how can I relax now? Should I watch a movie? Should I go to Netflix? Should I just, I'm not saying you can't never do any, any of these things. I do. I watch a, if it's a good movie, I'll watch it, you know, once in a while. I'm not really big into those, t t those things anymore because God is seriously like, I, <sighs> when I tell you, see, I shouldn't be the one saying this, but because I'm the only one here talking to you, I have to say this. I really, guys, I'm saying this like a, I, I'm going to sound like a child when I say this, okay? Um, I've changed in so many ways. It is so crazy. It's wild what God can do with us and in us, you know? It's like all I did, when I look back, all I did was just spend time with Him. I was so broken um and just was i was just so hungry for him that i would just come and just fall on the floor and just be quiet and just be with him you know and this would happen over and over again and until one day i realized you know all i want is just more of this experience i don't want anything else and then you know i'm not into a lot of things that i used to be into I, you know but of course, I like to enjoy a few things here and there, but man, nothing more than just being with God. And it has changed me in many, many ways. Okay, so think about this question. Okay, I wrote this down. How different would life be? How different would life be if you experienced God like this every day? Have you thought about that? How different would life be? Hmm? Jesus is our high priest now. Back in the day with the Israelites, when God asked them to set up the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant and put that in the uh, most holy place, you know, that everybody did not have access to, only one high priest could go in there, and I believe it was just once a year, to, you know, do the rituals and things, okay? Today, thanks to Jesus dying on the cross, and remember the, that curtain, um, it tore, and so... It is now unveiled. God's glory is unveiled to us. We have direct access to His presence. Why are we not going into His presence every day then? So Jesus became our high priest. Jesus became our high priest. I want to read just one more thing and then I'll be done. Okay, so let's go to... Hmm, I'll do it right here. This would be better. Yeah. I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I'll read that first, and then I'll go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 4, 16. It says, um, okay, I'll just read from 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to the confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. We can come to him now with confidence, with boldness, okay? So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. 
here is the answer to all of your issues. <laughs> Did I mention this already? I don't know. But our prayer life will absolutely change and there will be a lot of things that we will even stop praying about because those things you realize are not important anymore. You just trust the Lord. He will provide you those things and that's it. Meanwhile, you're using that time, that huge chunk of time, just to be with Him and just to behold Him, just to gaze on His beauty. This is beautiful. And then I want to read Hebrews 10, which talks about this very thing that, you know, about Jesus' perfect sacrifice and what that did for us. I want to read, probably we'll read, um, let's see. Yeah, most of this, most of this. Um, right, okay. Oh, this is beautiful. You know what, I'm going to leave this for you all to read in your own time. Um, but I will right now read from verse 11. Now every priest stands day after day, ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after offering one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. He is now waiting until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanct who are sanctified. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. For after he had said, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He adds, I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have boldness, once again, it says here, boldness to enter the sanctuary through the blood of Jesus by the new and living way that he has inaugurated for us through the curtain that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of faith, our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. That is beautiful. Oh wow. I think that is a good place to, to end this video. But remember this, we have we have direct access to the heart of God. It's absolutely beautiful. So, you know, just remember, this is where we are changed. When we meet with God like this is where, that's the place where um, real change happens in our, in, our, in our hearts. Okay, so let us live a life that is centered around meeting God. Live a life that is centered around knowing God and pursuing encounters with Him. Why? Because we cannot come away from experiencing the fullness of His presence and remain the same. No, it's not possible. So this really is absolutely good news for all of us. Okay, so I'm just, I'm, I'm praying that you will go boldly into the presence of God today. I pray that you will put aside time and make space for God, just to be with God. I pray that as you spend time with Him, that the Word of God will, will come alive and you will have encounters of the sweet, with the sweet presence of God. And you will go, you will, you will see yourself taking these walks in the garden with God. And as you do that, you will have these beautiful visions, I pray, of this intimate walk with Him. You will see your hand in His. You will see the two of you just resting under His shadow. I don't know why I'm seeing this, but I see like a tree, a beautiful tree. And sitting under that tree, 
is God and us, you know, spending the one-on-one -on -one time with Him. And we're just resting on Him. There is absolutely no striving there. He is just so in love with you. And you're so in love with Him. And there's so much peace and quiet in that place. And the face, the countenance of this person has changed so much. As this person is just beholding Him. This person is even beginning to uh, look and feel different. This is all about abiding, abiding under his shadow. It's a beautiful thing. Be blessed, everyone.